This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. It's a weather alert day. Let's take a live look over St. Louis from 100 above the park. Right now, there isn't much to see, but tonight, gusty winds and heavy rain are moving in. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Let's get right over to meteorologist Jim Castillo for our weather first forecast, Jim. Yeah, we start a weather alert because that rain isn't too far away and also the wind with it, which comes later tonight. And you can see whether you just saw 100 above the park looking toward Clayton or even right here at St. Charles, it is looking stormier. The sky is getting darker and even our southern counties anywhere from uh, really uh, from Farmington to Rolla has already had some rain. Rolla about a tenth of an inch of rain. Uh, really no thunderstorms. Those have stayed in southwest Missouri or southeast uh, Missouri and into southern Illinois, but zooming in a little bit, you might get a downpour already. Just it's overcoming some dry air in place. This is the first batch of moisture, so that low is tracking out of New Mexico into West Texas. Already that purple box is a tornado watch box that'll stay away from us. That's around Dallas and Corsicana, Texas. And then for us over the next 12 hours, that rainfall heads our way. We may hear some thunder, but the wind picks up especially after midnight gust of 40 and rain at times could be heavy and we're talking two to three inches of rainfall and then temperatures in the 40s tomorrow. There may be some areas of wet snow. We'll talk all about this coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jim, and you can get the latest weather first forecast on your phone. Just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. In the last hour, we've learned that the Missouri State Auditor issued a subpoena to St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. The auditor is requesting bank statements, credit cards, and more. The past two weeks, Gardner has been criticized for not fully prosecuting a man who hit a teenage girl in St. Louis, causing her to lose both legs. Missouri's Attorney General has filed a petition to remove her from office. Today, Auditor Scott Fitzpatrick said, quote, Serious questions have been raised about the performance of Kim Gardner's office and the fact that she refuses to produce basic financial documents for review is extremely concerning. The audit is expected to wrap up later this year. Justice was served. Justice was served. A former St. Louis reality TV star will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Today, Tim Norman was sentenced in a murder for hire plot against his nephew. Norman and his family are known for the show. Welcome to Sweetie Pies. Five in your size, Justina Coronel is live outside the federal courthouse in downtown St. Louis where the sentencing happened. Justina. Yeah, Kelly, so just a few hours ago, the victim's mom and her side of the family were out here rejoicing and celebrating over that sentencing. And they tell me they've been waiting for this moment since this all happened seven years ago. Now, earlier today, Judge John Ross said Norman committed a cold-blooded, premeditated, planned ex execution of his nephew. Now, the judge gave the 43-year-old defendant two life sentences for conspiracy to commit murder for hire and murder for hire resulting in death. He also received an additional 240 months for wire and mail fraud. Now, back in September, a jury found Norman guilty of taking out a life insurance policy worth $450,000 on his nephew, Andre Montgomery Jr., and then having him killed. Three other co-defendants have already ple pleaded guilty for their roles, and today we spoke to Montgomery's mother, who says she doesn't know why this happened, but she finally has the justice she's been looking for. I never know really why, other than what's been presented in court. I knew God was in control. Yeah. And I knew that he was going to get what he's supposed to got, and he got exactly what he deserved. Now, Norman's attorney tells me they will immediately appeal, and it could take about a year to go through the entire process. Now, Norman didn't say much in court, but he was vocal on social media. Exactly a week ago, he wrote on Instagram claiming his innocence and said, hashtag innocent. Reporting in downtown St. Louis, Christina Cornell, five on your side. A man is in police custody for a crash that killed four young people and injured four others. Cedric Dixon turned himself into police last night. Police say he ran a red light and hit an SUV early Sunday morning on South Grand. That SUV went off the overpass and landed upside down on Forest Park Avenue. Court documents say Dixon got out of his car after the crash, removed his plates, and then ran off. He is charged with 17 crimes. Today, advocates for safer streets push for changes that could reduce deaths and dangerous situations. It comes after St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones committed over $46 million this week to improving roadway safety. Ryan Henson shows how changes have already improved one busy St. Louis street.
We're uh, addressing uh, traffic safety as a comprehensive issue. Mayor Tashar Jones and state leaders are looking to make St. Louis streets safer. We have all this money that's coming in, but in, in, in case that, that money doesn't get spent right away, you know, we really can't wait two to three years to see these improvements made because people are people are dying, of, you know, right now. Sam McCroy is with Trailnet, an organization that works with local and state leaders to improve roadway safety in the region. Since 2017, these nine roads are responsible for 46% of pedestrian deaths in St. Louis, but make up less than 2% of roadways, according to Trailnet. However, crashes on one of these roads, Natural Bridge, are quickly dropping after major changes have been made in recent years. And I know this is a controversial opinion, but I, I'm personally a big fan of roundabouts. They're, they're proven to reduce crashes at intersections. They force cars to slow down um, at those intersections. In 2020, there were 25 crashes with injuries at the intersection of Natural Bridge and Goodfellow. Now that there's a roundabout, there was just one between January and October of last year, according to a Trailnet study. I think saving lives is honestly more important than, that, than you know, adding a couple minutes to people's commute. Roundabouts, tightening lanes, reducing lanes, and lowering speed limits are changes that will make St. Louis safer, according to Trailnet. McCroy says city streets are grossly overbuilt for the population. Taking away extra roadway will tighten up traffic patterns and create more space for others who use the road. Ryan Henson, five on your side. Tonight, environmental advocates and customers are voicing their concerns about recent rate hike requests from Ameren, Illinois. Some say their bills have already doubled, and this would add to that increase. Five on your side's Travis Cummings joins us in studio with what's behind the requests and the outrage. Travis. Kelly Mike, at the end of January, Ameren, Illinois filed for its largest rate hike request in its history. Now it's asking for a four year electric rate increase of $436.6 million. The Citizens Utility Board says these increases would impact delivery rates, which take up about a third to a half of electric and gas bills. It's what the utilities charge customers to cover the cost of delivering gas or electricity to homes plus a profit. Now today, the Illinois Clean Jobs Coalition put out these newspaper ads to alert customers about the company's record request and quote excessive pro profit grab. Members say they feel like it is wrong for the Ameren to use the rate hikes to lock in profits for their shareholders higher than the national average. Ameren is also asking for a $160.4 million gas rate hike, which it filed January 6. The ICJC says the company has blamed cheaper clean energy like wind and solar for the increases. The coalition has a better idea. We know that renewable energy is cheaper. Um, and these rate hikes are going to continue investing in old technologies like fossil fuels, coal and gas, um, and they're on the way out. Illinois is building renewable energy at a you know, remarkable pace, and the faster we can integrate that into our grid, the better and the cheaper it will be uh, for consumers. And we did reach out to the company. Ameren, Illinois, says it supports the state's clean energy transition. And as required by law, they did file a multi-year plan to help pay for that transition. Right now, the Illinois Commerce Commission is conducting an 11-month review. A decision is expected in December with a planned effective date of January 1st, 2024. Mike.